recently in a comment, I was asked by a viewer if I had ever heard of this story, and I had not. So I wanted to come back and read a little bit about this. Um, it's from Ashland, Kentucky. East Park, John Doe. Now, I wanted to go back and look for stories about him before he was identified, but I'm just going to read this. This is from the Daily Independent. This was posted in uh, September of 2023. Three years after two hunters discovered a dead body about a mile from I-64 near Boyd, Carter, and Greenup County, um, where the three counties meet. This was across from the Kentucky Veterans Cemetery. He was uh, up in, for the last three years, he was known as the East Park John Doe. The remains are those of Zachary Taylor Pearson from St. Albans, West Virginia, according to a press release from the Boyd County Coroner's Office. Kentucky State Police and the Kentucky Medical Examiner's Office teamed up with Othram Labs out of Texas to help identify the body. Coroner Mark Hammond said on social media that he never thought we would be able to identify this person. We had so little to go on. But with the help from the lab and DNA, we I don't think this case would have been solved. Pearson was born on February the 26th, 1997 originally from St. Albans, West Virginia. He had no known associations with Kentucky, but his hometown is about 50 miles from Ashland, where he was discovered. Back in 2020, hunters discovered the body. At first, they thought it was an animal carcass. In July of 2020, hunters out in the woods hunting smelled a really bad odor and they thought it was probably a dead animal. A week later when they were in the same area in the woods, they saw human remains sticking up out of the ground. On top of the body was some rock and charred remnants of a fire. When Pearson's body was found, there was a little road that burns right off the right and loops into a good sized lot. Kentucky State Police detectives referred to it as a well-known party spot. Pearson was found in a shallow grave wearing nothing but boxer shorts. According to Kentucky State Police, there are no other personal items near him, no ID, and no wallet. Authorities did determine the cause of death was a gunshot wound, but it was not clear whether he was murdered elsewhere and brought there or if he died there in that spot. According to previous reports in this newspaper, there were no missing persons reports of anyone during the time frame matching his description from Ohio, Kentucky, uh, Virginia, West Virginia, Tennessee. So no one had reported him missing. Maybe they just... Investigators are now working to identify the person responsible for his murder. So he had not been reported as a missing person. So there wouldn't he wouldn't have been listed on any of the like um, Charlie Project or any of that. Boyd County, Kentucky, a body discovered in 2020 in a shallow grave has now been identified. So the question that I would like to know, and going back looking through this, I'm going to continue to read as much as I can to see what I can find about this. When they first discovered the body and they announced it to the public that there had been a body discovered, and um, were they able to give any kind of details about the description of the body? And did anybody start to think, well, you know, I haven't heard from my relative in a while, or, you know, did anybody start to ask, you know, questions about who he was? And I don't mean the police or the media. I mean people who maybe had a family. Like I said, there had been no missing person report filed for anyone meeting or fitting his description. So when it was announced that they had found a body, 
He remained a John Doe. Uh, they they checked his description of what they had to go on, what they were able to determine, just by his bones, by his remains. And they checked for missing persons reports of anyone who fit the description or, you know, within a range of people that would fit that description. And they could find nobody who had been reported missing. Now, I've gone through and tried to, to research and look for what was going on in his life. He, his DNA was entered into CODIS, and they did not get a match. And I doubt that they were able to get any fingerprints due to the you know, decomposition. So they put his DNA into CODIS, and not, nothing came up. He was 23 years old. His identity, see, three years passed from the time that they discovered his body until the DNA said who he was. So now who was his family? Pearson's family members shared their own DNA with a Ancestry website. That's how to make the break in this case. So they put Pearson's DNA into the websites and the family members. So apparently they knew that you know, the family members put their DNA out there, probably knowing that he was missing, knowing that there was a possibility that he could be deceased. Zachary Taylor Pearson was a man whose remains were found in a shallow grave on a leased property in Ashland, Kentucky. He had been shot in the head and had seemingly been using drugs shortly before his death. Zachary Pearson was from St. Albans, West Virginia. Now, this is about 50 miles from Iceland. So how did he get there? Was he with friends traveling uh, or did someone take him? Or was he not, like they said originally, they didn't know whether he, was, he died there and his body might have been brought there and dumped out. Pearson is believed to have died from a gunshot wound although it remains unclear whether the crime scene occurred there or elsewhere. A toxicology report indicated the presence of drugs in his system at the time of his death. This may be why he was not listed as a missing person. His family, maybe he had been on the streets for a while. Maybe he was, you know, estranged from them because of drug use. I don't know. I'll continue to look for more information on his case, and if I hear of any updates, I will come back and talk about that. I was on Facebook earlier today, and I came across a post, and it just stuck out to me, and I wanted to um, make a video about this. I don't remember which page it was on, but it was one. Um, it was on one of the missing persons pages that I follow on Facebook, and this woman posted, "Please help find my son. He's been missing since 2006." It just was, you know, put upon me to make a video about him after reading her post. So she's been looking for her son all these years. So this is the story. I'm going to just go through some different websites and read what I can find. This was updated April the 18th, 2023, and this is on Uncovered. Missing Christopher Gregory. Christopher Gregory, a resident of Russell Springs, Kentucky, disappeared on January the 31st, 2006. After leaving a friend's residence en route to a meeting at Key Village in Russell Springs, Gregory was last seen at around 9.30 p.m. that night and has not been heard from since. The same day as his disappearance, his green two-door 1997 Pontiac Grand Am was found in the parking lot of a bowling alley near Lakeway Drive, and U.S. 127 in Russell Springs, not far from where he was last seen. Two months later, in March of 2006, his driver's license and some other documents were discovered on the side of a road in Jamestown, Kentucky. 
A search of the surrounding area revealed no evidence or any signs of his whereabouts. Numerous rumors have circulated about Gregory's disappearance, including unverified claims that he was abducted at gunpoint and that drugs were involved. Authorities suspect four individuals were involved in his disappearance, and at least six others may know what happened to him. However, no real evidence has emerged, and his case remains unsolved. He was 21 years old at the time that he went missing. He's a white male, height, six foot tall, 180 pounds, and black hair. And he is listed on Name Us as missing person number 68. He would be 39 years old today. He was last seen wearing a white short-sleeved shirt with green and brown stripes, a lightweight brown zip-up jacket, blue jeans, and white Fat Farm sneakers. He has a birthmark on his left shoulder and a scar on his forehead. 2013. A Russell County man has been missing for more than seven years, and on the eve of his 28th birthday, Chris Gregory's family is asking for help. I never thought the night he left that he wouldn't be back, said his mother. It's still just like it just happened. On January the 31st, 2006, the night Chris Gregory was last seen, he was with friends at a party. The friends later told police that Chris left to go to the Key Village Shopping Center in Russell Springs. At the time, no one knew why. The next morning, his car was found in the sh uh, shopping center's parking lot, but Chris was nowhere to be seen. I got to bed at night thinking, I go to bed at night thinking, what did they do to him? Where did they leave him? Did they torture him? says his mother. The same year Chris went missing, police found his driver's license in a ditch. Other than that, there has been nothing. I know he didn't just disappear into thin air. I wish somebody would help me, says his mother. Tell me something. Who was the last person known to have seen him? Did anyone in that plaza parking lot say yes we did see him here they said he was going there to a meeting but then in the next story it says nobody really knows why he went there um, did they tell police that he went there before his car was discovered or did the police go there to check to see if that was where he was at and found his car I don't know what kind of party he was at. I don't know what was going on that night. Is it possible that someone grabbed his wallet and just took what cash he might have had and threw the rest out? But his distinguishing characteristics are that he had pierced ears and a pierced tongue. So, if they find any remains... Are they, you know, would they be able to determine that? So I don't know what this story is that he was abducted at gunpoint and drugs were involved. None of these stories have been confirmed. So I don't know who was supposed to have told the police this. Like I said, did someone in that parking lot actually see him there that night and tell the police, yes, he, we saw him out there, he was talking to somebody or just sitting in his car or is it possible that someone else dr drove his car there, left it parked, and made up this whole story that he left this party to go to this meeting or to go there? Like I said, in one story they say they don't know why he went to the plaza. In the next story they say he was going there to a meeting. So what kind of meeting? Were they indicating that he was going there to meet a woman? Was he going there to meet someone to buy drugs? Um, I don't know. It doesn't say. The investigating agency is the Russell Springs Police Department. 
270-866-3636. If you, if you know something about a case that I talk about that I might leave information out, I don't care at all for people to offer help on that. But I do appreciate all my um, subscribers. I appreciate everyone who watches. And um, thanks for watching.